Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Marciano Stadium, where your Brockton Lady Boxers are taking on the West Bridgewater Wildcats of the Mayflower One League. Uh, tonight's game is a non-league tilt, as the Boxers, as you know, are in the Big Three division, which includes New Bedford High School, Durfee High School, and of course your own Brockton High School. Uh, some keys to the game here. Uh, Jen Caruso for the Brockton Boxers is on a tear of epic proportion, scoring nine goals in the last week's contests. Uh, she had four tallies versus Durfee uh, in the Brockton Boxers' first home league win of the season. And then she added four more just a few days later. Excuse me, five more uh, for a total of nine. Uh, just a few days later against Ursuline. So, tremendous task for the Lady Wildcats to try and stop her as she has really been on an incredible run lately. And they will do their best uh, to limit her touches, limit her opportunities as the game gets underway here. The Lady Wildcats and Skylar Roberts starting it off. Kicks up the field to the waiting Brockton defense of Elizabeth Buckley and La Lara Andrade. Nearly slips on the far side there, but she appears to be okay. Header thrown in, Elizabeth Buckley there to get it for the boxers. Dribbling with the ball now is Olivia Arce. Passes to the middle, kicked out by the boxers. Up around half field, and Caruso's got one woman to beat. The lone defender back. Nice in and out move. She gets past her, looking for a shot, and great save there by the goalkeeper for the Lady Wildcats, Allison Quinn. Tremendous effort there by Caruso, and boy, did she get close to putting up her 10th goal of the season. Now it's kicked out of bounds by the West Bridgewater Wildcats. And it'll be a throw in on the far side there for the boxers. Inbounded to Narita Montrand. Uh, she gets it over, now stolen in the middle there by the Wildcats and Marissa Molinari. Uh, back with Brockton here, passing down low. Nice little run on the ball by Yasmina Teixeira, looking for who else, Caruso. Not able to get the ball there in West Bridgewater. Had it back up, and now there's going to be a stoppage, and it will be a free kick right about the Boxers logo. Nice night out this evening. Uh, not too not too cold, uh, a little chilly. You can tell that fall is officially here. Uh, the first week of fall, now fully underway, and the weather is showing us that it is so, as the West Bridgewater Wildcats are able to clear it up. Now backtracking a little bit and looking for her teammate, Olivia Church. Caruso with a nice pass there over to Michaela Robinson. Looking back inside to Caruso, who's waiting patiently on sides. And it, the ball is officially kicked away and out of bounds. But it will be a Brockton throw-in coming from Lara Andretti. She gets the ball in there to Narita Montrand. Over there for the boxers as well, Michaela Robinson. West Bridgewater and Olivia Arce, Arc about uh, able to get it out. The ball is kicked out of bounds here by the boxers, so it'll be a throw in on the far side for West Bridgewater. Nice throw in there to a teammate waiting on the far side, but Elizabeth Buckley is able to step up and get it out of there. Maria Del Pico helping the cause for the boxers. Uh, a little deflected pass out there running down Marissa Molinari, uh, but unable to get it as Buckley backtracks and saves the ball. Now the referee appears to have called it out on the far sidelines. As there's a throw in for West Bridgewater, Elizabeth Buckley back for the boxers, boots it, and it will go out of bounds once again. Throw in coming here about the 35 yard line as the football marks, as always, are left on the field for the soccer games. Nice throw in there, and Elizabeth Buckley right in the middle of things as usual for the Brockton boxers defense. And here's a little, here was a little run there for West Bridgewater, but the referee is gonna signal that uh, Marissa Molinari was in fact offsides. 
Now we have a kick here coming for the boxers. Tiana Brooks ready to boot it upfield. Michelle DeCastro is the coach of the West Bridgewater Wildcats. Uh, nice run here for Skylar Roberts down the near side and good defense there coming through is Tiana Brooks. Strong move. Uh, she saw the offensive player moving towards the ball in the corner there and was able to get there just in time and kick it out of bounds as Molinari puts it into the middle for the Wildcats. And out here on the far side, Skylar Roberts. She will throw the ball in for the West Bridgewater Wildcats. Back to Skylar Roberts, gets it to the middle of the field where a teammate is waiting and an errant shot there by Kaylee Haynes, uh, had the ball right about the 10 yard line, probably should have taken a touch with it, only had one defender to beat. Instead tried to one time it uh, towards the goalkeeper and freshman Tori Viola for the boxers able to get it out as the ball is kicked around here a little bit at midfield. Maria Del Pico uh, trying to make a strong move there through the middle. Good lead ball. Uh, looking up for Caruso was Shanae Silva. She received a nice pass from Narita Montrand looking for Caruso up the near sidelines. It was not to be. Now the boxers are back on control and West Bridgewater's half. Over there on the far side, Michaela Robinson gets it in the middle there to Narita Montron. Stop and go move out to the right side. Takes a rip and good, good stop there by Bridget Mills. Way to stay on top of the ball. Caruso in the middle of the field here as she is swarmed under by now gives it off to Del Pico. Good move there and Caruso trying to do a little bit too much down here on the near side. Uh, has the ball lost and going the other way with it is Addison Klimo, starter for West Bridgewater High School. West Bridgewater, interestingly enough, starts one eighth grader. Uh, her name is Kaylee Haynes, uh, mentioned just before this. Seems a little bit young to be playing on a varsity team, but hey, if you got the skills, you can play. And good for her as there's a throw in by West Bridgewater up to the boxers now. Caruso with a good looking shot and it's in the net. Jen Caruso with a nice left to right move on the pass from Tiana Brooks, interestingly enough. And very nice shot for Jen Caruso as she continues her tear. That's now 10 goals in the last two and we'll say about a seventh contest. Wonderful shot there is Caruso. Really just doing doing what needs to be done in terms of scoring goals for the boxers, but credit her teammates for not only looking to get her the ball, but also looking for their own opportunities and being confident with touches. Uh, I think on the backside, especially for the lady boxers, Elizabeth Buckley's play is pretty unheralded. There's a beautiful move there by Aria Sylvia. Ends up losing the ball, but Boy, some of these boxers really have the ball on a string and they're demonstrating the footwork that they've been working on in the off season. That's one thing that Amir De Silva talked about. His team practiced very hard coming into the season. They're expecting to win the big three conf conference. You know, and he said that his he has some skill players on this team who can do some special things. And if they work together, the sky's the limit as Caruso has the ball here about midfield. Good defense there by Olivia Sarantopoulos of West Bridgewater High School's Elizabeth Buckley boots it down the field and the waiting keeper for the Lady Wildcats is Allison Quinn. Now up to center field here as Lydia Dunn, Lydia Dunn kicks the ball over towards the sidelines and then very safely Lara Andretti is able to uh, boot the ball out of bounds as there's a throw in here for the Lady Wildcats as Skylar Roberts gets inside. Boy, had a, had a half step. Again, West Bridgewater probably, and Michelle Castro specifically, want her team to take a touch towards the net before they decide to take shots on a goalkeeper, Tori Viola, who has proven herself to be very capable despite being a freshman. This is a run up the near side for Janae Silva. They're battling for the Wildcats is, is Sarantopoulos. And she throws the ball back in now. Molinari is waiting there, and Ari Sylvia heads the ball out of bounds safely for the boxers. 31-22 left in the first half as the ball deflected off of Tiana Brooks. 
And it will be a throw in again for the Wildcats. And that is Olivia Church down here on the near sidelines. Thrown in, Elizabeth Buckley heads it out. Throw in here for Katie Haynes, that very young eighth grader that we just talked about. Good for her. I'll tell you what, she is not, she is, appears to be very tall uh, for her age because she she's bigger than a lot of these girls who are juniors and seniors out here for Brockton. Uh, pretty impressive size. And now maybe you, you know, you can see why she's playing on the varsity team here and starting for West Bridgewater, which is really impressive. Uh, as she comes to the near sidelines with Ari Sylvia. Good defense there, sort of walling her off. Now she's covering Sylvia here. Good use of the body there, but able to gringle the ball away from her with Janae Silva. Ooh, Maddie Del Pico, nice, nice aggressive move there. And West Bridgewater's gonna get called for a push. That was Olivia Ark. Referee has reset the ball and the boxers will kick it off now. Up the field and waiting for it was Emily Yo. Emily Yao for the Lady Wildcats. Throwing on the near sidelines for Yasmina Teixeira into Caruso, who uses her body effectively. Finds her teammate running up the field, Narita Montron, back to Caruso. Takes a step in. Boy, she, oh, good defense there by the Lady Wildcats. Number 13, Bridget Mills. Stiff defense there in the face of Caruso, who as we said before, is on quite a tear scoring goals, but stayed in front of her and was able to poke the ball loose. Caruso d has the scoring touch to be certain, but before that, her moves to get inside and better position on, on defenders is really impressive. She knows how to use her body, acceleration, quickness, and she puts it all together to present a very formidable attack here for the Lady Boxers as there's a throw in on the far side. And Bridget Mills boots it up the field for the Lady Boxers. Buckley does the same back down. Nice touch pass there. Maria Del Pico controls over to Ari Sylvia, who's harassed by Allison Klima. Looking up the field, finding Narita Montron, looking for Caruso in the middle there. And Bridget Mills is, is all over that uh, back line of the defense for the Lady Wildcats as Brockton continues to just boot the ball down and hope for a run here. Good aggressiveness, Mills is there defensively. Ner Narita Montrand doing a good job trying to keep the ball in. Mills wins the battle and it will be a goal kick for the Brockton Boxers. The lights are on here at Marciano Stadium. Temperature roughly in the upper 50s. Slight breeze here. Brockton, Massachusetts. Pretty beautiful day, all things considered. It being fall and all as Lady Wildcats were looking to advance the ball up the field. Kaylee Haynes unable to get to it. So there's a throw in over to Caruso and give the West Bridgewater Wildcat women credit. They are playing Caruso very aggressively. Someone on the coaching staff there perhaps has had a little scouting report and it involves not allowing 22 the space that she needs to do what she wants to do and that's score goals incessantly. As it's booted out of bounds again, boxers working their way closer towards goalkeeper Allison Quinn. Quinn, the junior for West Bridgewater Nice trap there, over to Caruso. Down here on the near sidelines for the boxers is Yasmina Teixeira running with the ball towards the middle. Now Caruso, appearing to set a pick there. That was a, that was a pretty good design and again shows her willingness to be a teammate as well as a leader. Uh, good for her trying to open up the field for the senior defender, Yasmina Teixeira, of the Lady Boxers, as we're gonna have a throw in down here from Tiana Brooks. The defense woman coming up to do her job, gets it into Caruso, nice little trap. And that was an incredible 
shot by Caruso. I gotta be honest with you, West Bridgewater, yeah, they're turning around looking at the goalkeeper and they're looking at the referee too. I don't think, boy, that was just a heads up play by Caruso. West Bridgewater unaware that the play was gonna get underway. The ball got into Caruso. They didn't close down on her. Next thing you know, there's a goal in the back of the net and Michelle DeCastro like the other like her players rather, kind of throwing her arms up in the air in the direction of Mike Kelly, one of the referees here. Uh, and sort of just asking, you know, what the heck happened? I mean, listen, you know, you're told in all levels of sports, you, you play until you hear the whistle. And even when you don't think a play is going on, you know, you need to be ready. West Bridgewater clearly wasn't there. It's another goal for Caruso, her 11th in the last three games. And it's two nothing boxers with 25-25 left in the first half. Tough break there for the Lady Wildcats. That is an unfortunate occurrence, but one that hopefully they will learn from and you know realize that you need to be prepared on every play. As Ari Sylvia looks for Jen Caruso, traps the ball, looking to go right hand side, gets another shot off and deflected by none other than Bridget Mills, who's stuck like number 22, stuck like glue on number 22, rather. That's Jen Caruso, who will kick the ball in from the corner for the Lady Boxers. Just under 25 minutes gone here in the first half. Looks to get the ball into the middle. A couple of runs being made. And there's a shot there by Mulholland. Gets blocked and is now deflected out. We'll see what referee Mike Kelly calls it. And it's going to be a goal kick. The referee walking up about the 35 yard lines. Name is Randy, not sure of his last name. We had a quick introduction before the game. He made the call on the goal kick there as Sylvia is down there for the boxers as is Olivia Church for the Lady Wildcats. The ball goes out for a boxer's throw and using her body effectively as always is Caruso. Really understands how to wall off defenders in order to be able to trap that ball cleanly. Uh, really off of any play. That's one of her go-to moves. Uh, she uses all of her body effectively in getting the position she wants to attack from. Very quick on the turnaround. Has a good first step. Obviously great instincts. This is a throw in on the far sidelines for the Lady Wildcats. Elizabeth Buckley up from her defensive position to assist and almost getting in behind the defense there. If not for Yasmina Teixeira would have been Skylar Roberts, the captain, senior captain for the West Bridgewater Lady Cats. As that is our eighth grader, Kaylee Haynes down there getting the ball back from a teammate, making a nice little run there, going around a defender, looking back towards the middle, and I think showing her youth on that play as she probably should have continued to run the ball down the sidelines uh, and keep the defender on her back and then look for the crossing pass. Instead, decides to cross it over and it is booted away by the Lady Wildcats who now have the ball on the far side, 22-37 left in the first half. Ball's inbounded, Buckley waiting. Uh, definitely tried to kick that upfield a little bit, but it sort of shanked off her foot, we'll say, and went out of bounds around the 20 yard line for a West Bridgewater Wildcats throw in. Ball's now inbounded. West Bridgewater looking for a little lane there on the far side of the goal was Marissa Molinari junior forward for the Lady Cats, unable to corral the ball over there. And there's a little miscommunication between Michaela, Michaela Robinson and, uh, and the ball girl on the far sidelines, just trying to do her job. And Michaela Robinson accidentally, of course, but nonetheless kicked the ball uh, away from her. You know, a very unheralded part of the soccer experience is the ball person, especially in high school sports when soccer, when you have a running clock, it's very crucial to be able to have a ball right right at the time that you need it. And so having someone who will run around and shag those, for lack of a better word, good person to have around. We thank them for their service. 
Ari Sylvia boots it up the field. And Emily Yao waiting there. And then our own number two, Yasmina Teixeira, gets the ball back. Kicked out of bounds there by Allison Quinn. Actually deflected off a boxer and is going to stay in here. Buckley's on, on the ball, safely kicks it out of bounds as Kaylee Haynes was waiting to try and get a tally here and get the Lady Cats on the board at Marciano Stadium. Very nearly a nice back heel deflection by Laborio Alfalma, the assistant coach for the Lady Boxers. But he and Narita Montron both uh, unable to catch it. But again, another ball girl helping out down here. Actually have four or five of them out there. One, one it appears on almost every quadrant. Very smart positioning of the ball people. We commend whoever is in charge of their positioning. They have done their job admirably. Jen Caruso with a nice little back heel there. It's number three running down the field and boy, showing some serious wheels on defense is Olivia Church is able to run it down and it's now stolen back with a little shove there, Mulholland lets it go through, looking on the far side for Erica Santos, just into the game for the Lady Boxers. But she is unable to run it down and it will be a goal kick here for West Bridgewater. Well, not much action on West Bridgewater's side of the ball, at least offensively. They've spent most of their half on defense, trying to corral the Wonder Girl, that is Jen Caruso. She's running down for the ball now. On the case was Olivia Church, but unable to get the ball. And on the far side there, Lydia Dunn able to boot it out. And now it's controlled on the far sidelines from Nadia Cordoso, also in the game now. Erica Santos on the far right wing. Slowing it up, looking for a little cross, and Bridget Mills is just going to let it roll out of bounds there. It'll be a goal kick coming up for your Lady Boxers. Booted up the field by the West Bridgewater Wildcats, trying to keep the ball away from Jen Caruso as she got a little too physical on that play. Granted, Olivia Sarantopoulos was a little off balance, but a healthy shove there from Jen Caruso. Just letting her know that, that she's there and she means business, making sure that the defender, Sarantopoulos, stays on her toes. Sidmir De Silva throws the ball to Yasmina Teixeira, and she gets the ball in, and it's headed off the noggin of Olivia Church. Inbounding here for the boxers is Teixeira. Oh, looking for Caruso there and Sarantopoulos, as always. Now she appears to be the one marking her. By her, I mean Jen Caruso. Uh, Sarantopoulos is there, and then Bridget Mills uh, in behind. Again, Caruso trying to shield the defender, Sarantopoulos, off from the ball, but unable to do so as the speedy... Olivia was able to get there as Kaylee Haynes has the ball here on the far sidelines. And good see there. You know, now she's learning. She gave the ball back, didn't look for the cross immediately. Nice touch. And boy, she gets right in there. And an unfortunate shot, to say the least, after quite a brilliant set of moves there from the eighth grader. Got a little bit too excited, and Tori Viola didn't have to do much except watch it sail by. So we have a substitution here. Coming in is Fiona Carruthers. For Marissa Molinari, substitute for the Lady Boxers. And up on the ball, Fiona Carruthers right away. And Buckley's there with a leg to stop what could have been a, a very nice shot. But keeping Tori Viola unblemished thus far are the Brockton Boxers. Really, I don't think she's faced, she's faced maybe one serious shot that did not end up being quite a threat. Uh, so she has not had to work very hard in this game as of, as of this far. Addison Klimo trying to get it up for the 
Lady Cats as Erica Santos coming back from her forward position. Boy, and a pretty vicious shove there from the West Bridgewater Wildcat players. You like to see physicality from your players. That may have been a touch over the line for Olivia Ark, but nonetheless, no card coming here from Randy the referee. Sarantopoulos with Caruso bearing down on her. Aria Sylvia able to get in there. Church chasing the ball down for the Cats. And it rolls out of bounds. Looking up the field for Kaylee Haynes, unable to find her. As it gets back through her legs, smart defense there by Tiana Brooks. She had already turned and looked for it while the ball was rolling through Haynes' legs. And she was sort of unsure where it was. Brooks was able to get there and tap it away as there's a good header there from Maria Del Pico in the middle, trying to keep the ball away from the Lady Cats, controlled on the near side for the boxers. Del Pico looking over to the far sidelines for Erica Santos, she has her. Controlling the ball in front of Lydia Dunn, up to Mulholland who turns, backs around, Emily Yao watching her. It will go off Yao and Mulholland will have a throw in. Correction, she will hand the ball off to Nadia Cordoso, who's going to throw the ball in. And probably for good reason, was able to reach all the way down to Caruso, who, if not for getting held up on Sarantopoulos' legs, might have been off to the races down the far sidelines there. But nonetheless, it will be a throw in for the boxers as Cordoso is back for it, gets it into Caruso in the orange cleats shielding off the defender and stepped out of bounds on the far sidelines, perhaps doing a little bit too much. Simple give and go may have been a more feasible option in that scenario. Nice catch by Randy the referee on the far sidelines. And the ball trickles out of bounds on a throw in as it's been on the far sideline for quite some time here. West Bridgewater coaches Michelle DeCastro and assistant Kyla Daly looking uh, looking a little a little cheery for the occasion given the score right now. Not too concerned, well obviously concerned, but not appearing to be concerned over the score as is presently displayed with 13 minutes left here in the first half as there's a kick on goal. Allison Quinn able to boot it upfield for the waiting Fiona Carruthers. Controls the ball with Nadia Cordoso over there. She kicks the ball out of bounds. Throw in here for the Lady Cats. And Kaylee Haynes tried to get the ball, was unable to trap it underneath her shins. Rolling down, 13 minutes left here in the first half. So there's gonna be a throw in on the far sidelines. West Bridgewater playing uh, somewhat aggressive offensive set here. They have uh, they have Bridget Mills, the lone defender, and then they have Caruso blanketed with one-on-one -on -one coverage by Sarantopoulos. Uh, what amounts to be almost a man-to-man -man defensive and midfield scheme for the Lady Cats as the ball's in the middle here. And now it's able to be cleared out where Addison Klimo retrieves it. Kicks it back in and an attempted one-timer there by Fiona Carruthers. Again, one-timers are a very difficult maneuver to pull off in a soccer game. Usually what you want to do is take, trap the ball, take a touch towards the keeper, maybe let her tip her hand as to what move she or which way she's going to go. And then you have the upper hand, whereas if you're just shooting it off the bounce, or without a bounce, rather, you really don't have any control over the situation. Control down on the near sidelines here, Olivia Church. Gets it up to the middle. Stopped there, Addison Klimo on the far sidelines, Emily Yao. Gets it out of bounds, Mulholland with good hustle over there. Integral part of the boxer's offensive attack. Quick player, able to really sort of control the pace, almost a, almost like a midfielder out there. You know, controlling the ball, letting the offense set up, get into the positions they want, and 
really controlling the pace of the game as Del Pico gets it down and it's booted back up by Bridget Mills for the Lady Cats. Looking for an air through ball over here to the far sides. If she hustles, she'll have it. Not to be Elizabeth Buckley, just too quick and safely kicks the ball out of bounds. Running down there with good pace was the captain, Skylar Roberts, for the Lady Cats. Bit of good sportsmanship there by Elizabeth Buckley instead of making Roberts chase the ball. Kicked it back to her. Ari Silvia on the far sidelines here. Intercepted by Olivia Church. Olivia Church down the far sidelines to Lydia Dunn. Gets a shot off. What a rip from Lydia Dunn. Very impressive shot there. You saw Tori Viola just sort of looking up at it. Really unsure of whether that ball was gonna get over the bar or not. Not sure she would have been able to jump up and make a save regardless. As the announcer makes the call of the game here. Viola unable to save that. Tucked it in right under the crossbar. Boy, beautiful shot from Lydia Dunn there as she cuts the deficit in half with 10 minutes and 10 seconds remaining in the first half. Lady Boxers two, West Bridgewater Wildcats one. Jen Caruso storming up the field here. She must realize she needs to turn on the Jets because she's got another gear going. Gets to the keeper. Oh, nice save there by Allison Quinn. Boy, Caruso just took the ball and ran straight down the field. Quinn was paying attention there and was able to make the stop with her feet. And it was kicked out, now firmly out of bounds for the Wildcats. Addison Klimo there defensively. Throw in on the near side is gonna be Cardoso. Gets it in there to Jen Caruso. Caruso working with the right foot there, stop and go. And it's kicked up the field to Kaylee Haynes of the Wildcats. Looking for the give and go that was successful earlier in the half, but alas, it was not there. Boy, you see the communication though. There's a reason why she's on this team, communicating with her teammate. The captain, Skylar Roberts, telling her where to go. That's really incredible from an eighth grader to be telling a senior captain sort of, you know, okay, this is what needs to go on here. Really, you know, showing some maturity there and probably the reason why Michelle DeCastro has put Kaylee Haynes on this team. Under nine minutes left in the first half. Ball is given over. And there's gonna be, so there will be a timeout here by the Brockton Boxers with 8.23 left in the first half little recap for you guys. Jen Caruso, the two tallies, as we talked about, she's been on an incredible tear as of recently. She is a two-time Enterprise All-Scholastic in soccer, and she has scored roughly 80% of, probably closer to 90% now, with these two tallies of Brockton's total scores on the season. Uh, she was a big three MVP last year, having 12 goals. She is currently on pace to shatter that number that she scored last year. And she is part of a Brockton attack that is now three one and one on the season, including one and zero in the league with that win over Durfee six to one last week in which she had four of those now 11 goals. Uh, Admir De Silva very smartly calling that time out here uh, as the Wildcats were gaining a little bit of momentum. He brought his girls into the huddle. He's now telling them exactly what they need to know, where they should position themselves. Really a fiery little speech here as he's pounding his fist into his hand and pointing at each one of them and telling them most likely that the effort that they just displayed on the last goal there by West Bridgewater is not what it's going to take to win this game. As the players, including Ari Sylvia, walk out. A little upset. Admir De Silva now coming over here on the near sidelines, talking to Erica Santos. 
giving them a little positive encouragement. You like to see a little fieriness out of Admir. He's a fairly soft-spoken man. He is obviously a very good coach, has Brockton in a wonderful position this year. Clearly has the good fortune of having the likes of Jen Caruso on this team as Kaylee Haynes almost intercepts the goal kick. And now he's yelling at Tori Viola, sort of asking what the heck she was doing. She, uh, hopefully she would she was nearly distracted there as Kaylee Haynes again was able to get through. But alas, it will be a throw in down here at the 50 yard line for Olivia Church. Looking for Haynes, far sidelines. De Silva shows off his excellent footwork. As he's able to get the ball back. A uh, weak little kick there for Skylar Roberts. As now looking towards the goal was Olivia Ark and just sort of hit a dribbler over to Tori Viola. Boy, I don't know what's going on with her goal kicks right now. She's struggling a little bit. That was sort of a towering pop-up, if you will. Didn't make it much past the 30-yard line. She'll have to get a little more, a little better trajectory on the next one. Maybe perhaps that's what Admir was coaching her on just a minute ago as there's 7.15 left in the first half. And now Viola and De Silva appear to be having a little bit of an argument in the background as we now have a, wow, that was really impressive. A front flip throw in on the far sidelines from Amanda Almeida. That's not something you see every day, folks. Might have to cut that clip and send it into SportsCenter's top 10. I'm sure ESPN would like to see that down here at Marciano Stadium. <laughs> that was incredible. I can only imagine if if I tried to do that front flip throw and the alignment my back would be in afterwards. As Kaylee Haynes kicks the ball off the field and it's deflected out of bounds. I would surely need to see a chiropractor after such a maneuver, I'll tell you that much. And the Rita Montron on the far side, kicking it up overhead. Caruso down there, battling with Sarantopoulos as always. She smartly kicks it out of bounds. The boxers will set up another throw in here as our famous flipping throw in artist. Is she going to go for it again? And she is, boy. This is really something. I, I She's getting an incredible amount of distance on it, too. Going almost as far as a corner kick would from the far sidelines. Boy, that that's, that's just incredibly impressive. I, I can't even imagine doing something like that and then to go ahead and do it again. But, you know, to say nothing of the acrobatics, the throw in itself was very effective, getting almost down towards the keeper. We have a corner kick here. Our Sylvia looking for the ball. Kicking it overhead is Jamari Johnson, and there to retrieve it for West Bridgewater, Skylar Roberts kicks it out of bounds. Quite an impressive play. As I see, we have some of the guys varsity soccer team in here tough loss last night caruso down and bridget mills is able to kick it out lobbed back towards the defense as jamari johnson's waiting gets it to caruso with a nice shot and she scores again another game another hat trick jen caruso is unstoppable off jamari johnson's really Solid pass there in the middle. Caruso with a simple turnaround move. You cannot give this girl an inch. You give her an inch, she's going to take a goal from you. And it's 3-1, five minutes left. Just under five minutes in the first half. And the Brockton, the Brockton Lady Boxers are playing soccer and Jen Caruso scoring goals. West Bridgewater has got to be a little distraught at the turn of events. They get the momentum back and and really just turn it right back around. And it's it's come now twice from them not playing Caruso, not playing perhaps as intensely as they should playing lackadaisical. And you can't do that against a great offensive team and a great offensive player like Jen Caruso. You really can't. You make it far too easy for her. The way you win these games is you get her frustrated. You do not allow her to score multiple goals and especially three in the first half. It's demoralizing if you're the if you're the Lady Cats, and it's 
it bolsters the spirits if you're the Brockton Boxers. So we have a kick in here on the near sidelines. Free kick, excuse me, from Emily Yao. Looking down for Kaylee Haynes, who watches the ball trickle out of bounds. 3.30 left in the first half. So we're going to have a goal kick here. Usually it's Buckley, but with the honors currently, Amanda Almeida of the famous flipping throw-ins. That should be a an amusement park attraction or something. She that, that was just tremendous. Yasmina Teixeira working the ball back into her half. Good move there by Olivia Church on defense, kicking it out to the far side. She's got Fiona Carruthers. Two Brockton defenders there. Carruthers looks towards the middle. Got a girl coming through. It's Olivia Ark. Turns, tries to make a move towards the keep. Church still has it. Kaylee Haynes and the senior captain, Skylar Roberts, on the near side, as that could have been a very dangerous play. But good job by the Lady Boxers to pack the box and be able to get that ball out of there safely. As Caruso with a nice looking back heel there, just a little short of Yasmina Teixeira. Uh, good thought, not as great of execution as I'm sure she wanted. As we have the Lady Boxers coming down the middle now. Boy, good play by Tori Viola to slide in there. She is not afraid to throw her body around. She just slid in there with West Bridgewater's Skylar Roberts bearing down on her and able to make the save. Definitely took a little contact as we are at the two minute mark. The time will now be kept down on the field by the referees. As Ari Sylvia controls the ball, looks for Yasmina Teixeira, rolls out of bounds. Olivia Church here for the Cats on the near side. Looks for Kaylee Haynes, is unable to find her. And takes the headband off, she's gonna readjust. Make sure the hair's out of the eyes, that's critically important. And Haynes and her headband are Hitting the ball out of bounds once again, obviously deflected off Brockton. Over her head, running in behind is Fiona Carruthers. And what? That was a tough play over there by Elizabeth Buckley. She slides in on the near side. Well, it's only going to be a corner kick. So, in fact, good defense there for Buckley. Uh, there was some concern there, especially from the boxers faithful here that perhaps that was going to be a penalty kick but alas not awarded by the referees and good save over there on the far sidelines Tori Viola sort of lost the ball and defensively Ari Sylvia the captain able to get it out as Jamari Johnson running down the far sidelines and hits a screamer Amanda Almeida running up for the ball here She's gonna pull a little stop, turn around, looking for Caruso there and Sarantopoulos with a good defensive play. But Jamari Johnson, I don't think anyone in the stands, I certainly didn't see it. Jamari Johnson looked past Caruso to the far sidelines where, excuse me, Yasmina Teixeira was streaking in behind Caruso and was able to get to the ball. Caruso controls it, using her body to shield off Sarantopoulos, the fierce defender from West Bridgewater. On the far side, Narita Montrand in the middle to Caruso, looking for Jamari Johnson. Shields off Sarantopoulos, who gives her a good piece of the body once again. Nice touch from Jen Caruso. Good looking shot on goal, and a very nice save there by Allison Quinn. Really no, no danger to speak of for Quinn and the Wildcats, but when Caruso has the ball at her feet, you would do best to be as aware as possible as to what she's doing lest the ball go whizzing by you into the back of the net. Good hustle down there for the Cats. Kaylee Haynes showing her poise, trying to get the ball to the middle of the field. And she's got a woman with just a little bit too much of a touch there, Addison Klimo. And it's back up to the 25-yard line for the boxers. And Nadia Cordoso kicking it down toward the keeper, Tori Viola. She's going to have a few saves here in this first half. One lone tally for West Bridgewater on a beautiful shot, but not too shabby of a first half and really pretty un unblemished and un 
untested, we'll say. As the boxers inbound and Kaylee Haynes is going to be down, they're going to the referee is going to give West Bridgewater a free kick here, right about the 17-yard line. As now backing off of it, oh, and a good-looking shot there on net from the defenseman Emily Yao, but she was unable to bend it around Tori Viola to the, de the degree that she wanted. And down here by the near post, Viola was able to make the save. Olivia Church turning around, and that's going to do it for the first half as Mike Kelly blows the whistle. This one's going to come to a close in the first half as your Brockton Lady Boxers lead 3-1. to one. Another hat trick for Jen Caruso in the first half. Tremendous effort by the Brockton defense, including keeper Tori Viola. And the West Bridgewater Wildcats get a lone goal from Lydia Dunn with right about eight minutes remaining in the first half to keep themselves realistically in a position to come back in the second half.
championship there is Addison Quimo, who was in on the tackle of Caruso, comes over and they slap hands so as to squash the beef, so to say. And we like to see that good sportsmanship here from the two teams, West Bridgewater and Brockton. And no one wants to hurt anybody out here. The, I'm sure these girls like to play aggressively. You know, uh, you're allowed to use your body and for good reason, but when it goes over the line, whether or not the referee calls it or not, players generally usually take it into their own hands to remedy the situation. And that's exactly what we saw there between Klimo and Caruso. Rolling down towards the eight minute mark. And we have a limping boxer, number three on the far sidelines, holding her knee. Admir De Silva is down here on the close sidelines talking to Erica Santos, not exactly paying attention. Laborio Alfama looks like he's looking over there, but you know, maybe they, I don't know, maybe they can't see. Now Randy, the referee, is gonna go check on her and see if she's all right as the ball is kicked in up to Olivia Ark, who turns, made a move on Ariana Almeida, but that move was deemed to be illegal, and she was penalized for it. And now it will be a free kick for Nadia Cordoso of the Lady Boxers. Mulholland's waiting down here on the near sidelines, not sure if she will go in for the injured boxer or not but she will wait for a stoppage in play of some sort. And that may be her cue, now kicked out of bounds by Lydia Dunn. And limping off is DeSantos, which is the near sidelines, laboring pretty intensively, but able to get off in good time as Megan Mulholland, the freshman, comes on in replacement of her, and here comes a very nice flipping throw in yet again from Amanda Almeida and gets it into Mulholland in the middle who turns Olivia Church there defensively for West Bridgewater and is able to get, not able to get there, but the ball is now thrown in in front of her. Good job to step up defensively there by Olivia Sarantopoulos. She has had the hardest task defensively of the evening and has done an admirable job in it despite allowing a hat trick to Caruso in the first half has corralled number 22 very nicely here in the second half. Again, a flipping throw in from Amanda Almeida. And over there on the far sidelines is Caruso with Sarantopoulos there. And the captain Skylar Roberts now circling in defensively, looking for an attempted pass. Ari Sylvia there with Addison Klimo for the Lady Cats defensively. Klima was pointing like the ball should have been a West Bridgewater throw, and nonetheless, it's in there with the boxers. Narita Montron looking for Amanda Almeida. And good job defensively there for West Bridgewater was Olivia Ark coming back from her forward position, showing that she's quite a two-way player. And uh, Amanda Almeida is going to go ahead and do another somersault here and bomb the ball in, hopefully close to the kicker. She's getting the spacing. Ooh, and a shot over the goal by Carice Caruso. That field goal would have been good. Unfortunately, she's playing soccer tonight. And that one went straight through the uprights, but sailed over the goal. Ariana Almeida has been perfecting her flipping throw-in technique. Uh, during this evening's match, she's spacing it so that she gets closer and closer to the sidelines so as to get maximum distance on it. And really just an impressive display of athleticism. Uh, never mind doing it in practice, but breaking it out in a game is incredibly impressive. And you know, I hope to see that clip on SportsCenter, perhaps sometime this evening or tomorrow. As there's under five minutes here in the second half, Ari Sylvia looking up the far near sidelines for Narita Montrand tried a little give and go and Montrand was already spun running towards the goal and here comes our very own acrobat with another throw in here it's Almeida 
And that time, she, well, I'm telling you, she's getting closer and closer to the sideline. She'll be standing with her feet about a blade of grass away at some point this season. Looks to the middle, Almeida with a nice shot there. Top shelf, top right, nice shot by Amanda Almeida. 4-1 boxers, just on inside the four minute mark here in the second half. And Jen Caruso is getting a little, a little help here from her teammates. Ariana Almeida also scored in the game against Durfee and now oh, uh, okay and apparently it was Maria ah uh, I now see what happened Maria Del Pico has switched her jersey number she's now currently wearing number four and she usually wears number 21 but we talked about how she had the issue with perhaps a bloody nose earlier in the game. So her jersey is, is now in the wash and she's currently wearing Ariana Almeida's number four. So credit Maria Del Pico with that goal, in fact. Uh, spark plug midfielder here for the Lady Boxers, makes the score four to one. And running down just about to the two minute mark where time will be kept on the field. There's Del Pico with Mulholland just behind her. Up to Buckley. Buckley uses the inside of her foot to get it up the field. Olivia Church has it careen off her. And on the far side, it appears that Skylar Roberts took an inadvertent ball to the face. So she's shaking it off too. And she will be all right. Stays in the game here. And Del Pico chasing the ball down, trying to get it away from Addison Klimo. Gets it over to Church, who boots it up the field, looking for Kay Kaylee Haynes. Haynes with a good defensive play there by Elizabeth Buckley. Good play by Haynes, too. She got knocked down, but sort of fell on top of the ball and was using the rest of her body to shield it away from Elizabeth Buckley and actually was able to secure a throw-in for her team on the far side. And over there throwing it in is Skylar Roberts. Booted back out by a Brockton defender. Olivia Church there. Gets a ball on the far side. Time being kept on the field here. Under two minutes left. Four to one boxers over the West Bridgewater Wildcats. Ball down towards the goal line. Elizabeth Buckley taking her time running this clock out. And she rolls it over to Tori Viola. Who's going to kick it out of here. And stepping in to take the kick now, actually, is defenseman Tiana Brooks. Yet again, another impressive display by your lady boxers here this evening. Got to be very happy with the results thus far, and especially if you are a fan of Jen Caruso. She just continues to kill it, but let it be known, despite her scoring the majority of Brockton's goals, she is still getting help from her teammates in terms of the offensive scoring load, as you see with Del Pico getting a lone tally for any player not named Jen Caruso for the boxers tonight, as kicking it towards the goal, but out of bounds there was Fiona Carruthers, another, another defensive senior captain for the Wildcats. Good hustle on the far side there by the ball girl. Got a nice 35 yard run in there. Kind of have a goal kick by the boxers and to do that is Amanda Almeida, her of the flipping throw in fame. Ball squirts over to Megan Mulholland. Now down there is Skylar Roberts. On the far side, Buckley there defensively along with Tiana Brooks. Picked up by Tori Viola. There'll be one more, at least one more kick here from her. Perhaps another rush for West Bridgewater if they can get it together. And on the near side here, Narita Montrand. And rolls out of bounds there. Will be thrown back in by West Bridgewater. And that's Sarantopoulos. Getting it in, stealing the balls, Narita Montrand, making a nice move in front of Emily Yao. And the final whistle from Randy, the referee. And that will do it. Your final score here at Marciano Stadium. Brockton Boxers 4, West Bridgewater 
Wildcats one. The lone tally for the Wildcats was scored in the first half by Lydia Dunn on a nice under the bar shot for the Brockton Boxers. Three goals for Jen Caruso. Yet another hat trick on this young season. Her third in as many games. The Boxers are back here on Friday night. We will have the broadcast. West Bridgewater is off to continue playing in the Mayflower League and we wish them the best of luck. Despite uh, their loss this evening as the teams get together at midfield with a nice little handshake after a hard fought game. Physical battle for the Boxers and Wildcats here. Brockton showing that they are not only speedy and quick but also can be physical when needed. So that will do it for Brockton Community Access. I am Eamon Convey. Thank you to the rest of the crew for all their hard work. And we will see you on Friday night. Have a good one.